If you're anything like past me, you've probably been feeling tired over the last few days or maybe even weeks or can't even remember how it feels to not constantly feel exhausted. But past me got so annoyed by this that I started reading into the science of energy and into how we can boost our energy not only by sleeping more because that did not do it for me. In this video I'll go over the four factor framework that research has found to determine how much energy we have during the day and that since present me started paying enough attention to has literally changed my energy game and I can almost get guarantee you that it'll do the same thing for you. Let's dive in. The first factor is light, specifically morning light. So light has the biggest influence on our internal body clock, aka the schedule that our body follows in terms of feeling sleepy and feeling awake. And specifically morning daylight sends signals through your eye, through your retina to your brain to stop producing melatonin, aka the sleep hormone, for about 14 hours. Meaning if you go outside within one or two hours of waking up first your body stops producing melatonin meaning you are awake and second 14 hours after that it starts producing melatonin again making you sleepy and that means in the evening when you want to get sleepy when you want to feel like going to bed your body is actually gonna signal you to be tired and to move towards your bed but the thing that i did wrong here was to wear sunglasses whenever i was outside but the thing is if you do wear sunglasses your eyes your retina cannot get the signals from these daylight and send it to your brain to let it know that now it's morning. So it is very important to first go outside in the morning for about 10 to 20 minutes without sunglasses and to expose your eyes to light. And I do not mean expose your eyes directly to direct sunlight. This is still not good for your eyes. As soon as it hurts, follow that intuition and look somewhere else. And if you say that you don't have time to go outside in the morning, stick your head outside your window for as long as you have in the morning and just try to absorb as much light as possible and if that's also not possible either because you don't have a window or because you wake up very early in the morning where there's still no daylight outside turn on every light that you have to expose your body to as much light as possible even if that means that it's artificial light artificial light is still better than no light especially the blue light you know the kind of light that is really bad if you look at it late at night it's very good if you look at it in the morning when you want to tell your brain to be awake to produce cortisol aka the stress hormone which in the morning is essential for us to basically be awake and to function and to stop producing melatonin and in the afternoon and in the evening you can use light again but the other way around so the later it gets in the afternoon the less light especially the less blue light you should expose yourself to however that does not apply to outside light. If you go outside in the late afternoon or early evening when the sun is going down, that sort of light again sends the right signals to your brain to start getting into the evening mood, aka slowly starting to get tired. Factor number two, food. Next to light exposure, the things that we put into our body have one of the hugest effects on everything that happens in our body, including our energy levels, which makes sense, I guess. But still, there are so many things that I didn't know about food and its effects on our energy levels that I was really surprised to learn about. First, there's this thing with carbs. You might have heard by now that if you eat sugar, your blood sugar levels go up, meaning you're high on energy for a short while. But right after that while, your blood sugar levels drop even more than they were before you ate sugar which makes you feel very tired and energy depleted and probably also moody and hungry but that not only happens when you eat candy but also when you eat other kinds of sugar aka carbohydrates carbohydrates are as you might know also in things like pasta bread these kind of things and i'm not saying that you should stop eating bread and pasta during the day but I am saying that if you do eat especially white pasta, white bread, everything white with very short, not complex carbohydrates and don't combine these carbs with healthy fats and protein, that will probably lead to a blood sugar spike followed by a blood sugar drop followed by being tired during the day. And that's why researchers suggest that for breakfast and for lunch, we should not consume too much carbs, but rather try to put off the carbs till the evening when we actually want to make ourselves tired and to relax ourselves because carbs actually also have a kind of relaxing effect on our mind and body. And to be honest, that also happens when I eat oats, which are a pretty healthy source of carbs, but still it's carbs. And I do feel my energy levels drop after eating them. I mean, I still love my oats, so I will just have my oats with enough coffee and enough healthy fats and protein. And the same thing goes for my Sunday pancakes. When I have my Sunday pancakes with my maple syrup, I feel my energy dropping about one or two hours afterwards. 
but I don't care because I love my Sunday pancakes. But <laughs> it's still good to know that if I want to be energized, I should not eat too much carbs, at least not in relation to the protein and fats that I'm eating. Next to the carbs thing, there is the tolerances thing or allergy thing or your body just not liking or not being able to handle certain types of foods thing. So in the beginning of last year, I pretty much completely changed my diet and I started to leave out certain kinds of foods, which included dairy, pork, gluten, and nightshades. And I did that for my knee inflammation because I have an autoimmune thing. But but I noticed that it had such a big effect on my energy levels as well. And the same thing goes for things like allergies. If you have allergies to specific kinds of foods, but you keep eating these foods and your allergies are not that strong that you actually feel a direct effect like pimples in your face or getting sick or whatever, but just feel tired, what I recommend you to do is notice that when you are feeling especially tired, try to write down in a little food journal what you've eaten that day. And then after like one or two weeks, Weeks, try to see if you can find any system or pattern in that and maybe try to leave out these foods that you suspect could have a negative effect on your energy levels. Similar to that, but the other way around kind of is deficiencies. Since I started taking supplements for certain very, very important vitamins and micronutrients, I've been having so much more energy because many of us have, for example, not enough vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc, and magnesium. And if we supplement these macronutrients with supplements, that can really have a big, 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 big effect on our energy levels. So what I recommend you to do here, because I'm not a doctor, I can't recommend you to take any pills, go to your doctor, ask them to do a blood test, ask them if you have any deficiencies, and then maybe they will find something and then start taking the respective supplements. Of course, it's also very important to just eat healthy and to eat enough vegetables and fruits and nuts and protein. But eating healthy, holistic food is, I guess, self-explanatory to have more energy. In case it's not, here again, I'm telling you, just eating junk food will make you tired. Eating whole foods is very important also for our energy levels. But even if you are eating whole foods and are eating very healthily, you could still have some micronutrient deficiency. So make sure to get that checked out as well. Factor number three is sleep. Who would have thought that sleep is important when it comes to energy? I know, but before you skip this part, hear me out. Because I'm not just gonna say you need your eight hours of sleep. You probably know that not sleeping enough is gonna make you tired. That's not what I'm gonna say. But what I am gonna say is to sleep enough and to try to sleep the right amount. Ha! Huh. What is the right amount, you ask? Well, there's this thing called sleep cycles and a sleep cycle lasts about 90 minutes. And if we wake up within these 90 minutes in a specific window of these 90 minutes, aka our deep sleep, we're gonna feel groggy no matter if we slept four hours or 10 hours. And studies actually show that for many people, sleeping, for example, six hours can be better than sleeping seven hours because six hours is dividable by 90 minutes. So that means after six hours, the person has finished their last sleep cycle, while after seven hours, they might be still in that deep sleep phase. And if they are woken up to seven hours of sleeping, they're gonna feel very groggy. So I recommend you to figure out if your sleep cycles are also 90 minutes long. And you can do that by either experimenting or by just not setting your alarm if that's possible and just see how many hours you naturally sleep after how many hours you naturally wake up. And I'm guessing that it's gonna be after six, seven and a half or nine-ish hours. For me, I usually try to go for seven and a half hours or if I feel like I need more sleep, nine hours. If I do like eight or eight and a half hours, I'd rather just do seven and a half. So that is the thing with the sleep cycles. But then there's also the sleep quality, but this could fill a whole another video. So I'm just gonna go briefly over this. For sleep quality, one very, 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 very important factor is caffeine. And this is something I just really actually realized and put into action a few months ago. Ever since I stopped drinking coffee before 2 p.m., I've been sleeping so much better. I've been having a lot less trouble to fall asleep. And that is because coffee stays in our system for a long time. For one cup of coffee, our body needs about seven hours to get rid of half of that caffeine. And then it still has half of that cup of coffee's caffeine after seven hours. That means if you drink your last coffee at 6 p.m., you might be able to fall asleep for those people who say that I can drink espresso at 11 p.m. and still fall asleep. But your sleep quality is going to be 
worse no matter how much coffee you're used to this is just scientific fact that coffee is if you drink it too late in the day detrimental to your sleep quality so try to time your coffee consumption caffeine consumption in general this also includes black tea green tea dark chocolate all of these nice little things in your favor factor number four is movement you've heard about the importance of exercise before i am sure but let me just give you this nice little quote i love from make time by jake knapp and zon zaratsky who say that you should use your body to recharge your brain and i like this quote so much because it really emphasizes how important movement is to re-energize ourselves because i used to think that if i had a really hard day at work or something i should just lay on the couch and watch netflix all night long in order to recharge sometimes that's helpful too and awesome and i just love doing that sometimes but the way we actually recharge our batteries is by moving next to sleeping and eating because by nature our body is made for sleeping eating and moving and if we don't give our body enough of this basic need of movement our body gets used to this very low energy expenditure and thus will feel more and more energy depleted because we don't even need that energy so try to find a good workout routine take a walk stretch whatever you like to do just move your body as much as possible if you found this video helpful i'm sure you will like this one here as well thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next video